Let's go to the next journal. This is found on page numbers 212 and 213. Because of the variant nature of the car repair business, instead of doing it through a cash register, they record the sales on cash tickets. Okay? It's just like if you go take your car down to a car repair place that also has parts, you go into the parts, they're going to run it through a cash register because it's, they, it just works well that way, but they're going to hand write the tickets. So that's what they do in this gas and grocery business with the car repair shop is they individually write tickets. And some of those tickets are cash tickets and some of them are on, on account. So what we're going to do is enter the first couple in and then I'm going to let you enter the remaining. Now let's start by entering the first invoice. The date is October 8th. The reference number is 2780. And the description is the name on the invoice, which in this case is cash service sales. When they know that their customer is going to pay them cash, they don't take the time to write down their name. Okay, they don't need the name for receivable purposes. So we're going to put cash service sales in the description. Now, what did we get according to this invoice? Yeah, we got $677 in cash, right? Or check. And so we're going to debit the bank account for $677. And we are going to credit two things. We're going to credit the parts and service sales, $640, okay, which both includes the labor and the parts. And we're going to credit the sales tax payable for $37. Does that balance? Yeah. Okay. So that balances so far, right? Now, parts, we are going to handle the way that we dealt the other way day with inventory, Okay. We are going to make an entry in here for parts. Now, the reason why is because parts, we're working a system called specific identification, which is the same thing we did with artistic furniture, where we specifically identify the cost of each sale. Okay? So that's it's called specific identification for that reason. Now, again, we've included a code in here to mask it from the person who's watching us, we're going, or from the customer, excuse me, we're going to eliminate the last zero and read it backwards. It's a similar code, not exactly, but similar to what we use in artistic furniture. So what was the cost of the parts that we sold for $200? $120. We're going to enter that $120 into the parts cost column, which is in between parts and service sales and sales tax. Okay? We're just going to enter it in once. Now, you might recall with artistic furniture that the reason we did that was just to save us time. We could have put a debit on one side and a credit on the other and posted them each separately. But what, since the same amounts are going to be in both columns, we decided let's just put it in one column and then post the total to two different accounts. So what are we going to debit and credit in there? Debit the cost of parts, cost of sales, right? And credit parts inventory. Very good. Okay, so when we get to the posting process, we will make that or separation there. But for now, when you're balancing this journal, remember not to include that column. Okay, otherwise it won't balance. That column is self-balancing since it's being posted to two separate accounts, a debit and a credit. Questions on that? Okay, let's, that's the first entry. Let's do the second one together, sales invoice. Our date is October 8th. Invoice number 2781. This one is to James Jones. This is our customer name. On the left-hand side of this journal, we're going to record what we got. What did we get? Did we get cash? No, we got a promise. James promised to pay us, and we granted him that right. We told him that that would be fine. We could have said, no, we don't do that. Not the accountant, but the owner could have said that. I guess the accountant can have a say in it. But someone decided to grant James Jones credit, and so we're going to put it into accounts receivable, right, on the left-hand side. Now, there is not a specific column for accounts receivable, so what do we do? 
we write it in. It's one of the miscellaneous accounts on the left-hand side. What account number is accounts receivable according to our chart of accounts? Okay, let's all turn back to the chart of accounts and find that. It's just that couple pages back. The first thing we looked at, find accounts receivable. It's account number 220 on there. So put in the account number column on that second line, put 220. So you got the account number. And then to the right of that, put $473 which is the amount of the promise, okay? So we're not going to debit the bank account, only accounts receivable. Now that shows what we got. So over on the right-hand side, we're going to record where it came from. He gave us that promise because, one, he had some parts and service work done totaling $410. So put that into parts and service sales, $410. Now that's the first two lines of that invoice. James also... At the same time, just bought some, had his car filled up, asked us to fill his car up while we were doing it. So we put $20 worth of gas in his car. And he had some groceries that he picked up and asked if we, he could put those on his account too. And we said, sure. So we're really nice people here. Okay. So again, gas sales, we're going to put, tw in the, or we're going to put $20 in the gas sales column. And for the grocery sales, since there is no column for that, we're going to go back, find the account number under grocery sales, and put that in the miscellaneous columns on the right. What account is grocery sales? 410. So in the account number column, we're going to write 410, and to the right of that, we're going to write $18. That takes care of all of our sales. Now sales tax payable is going to be recorded at $25. And that entry balances now. Okay, we've got 473 on the left. We've got $473 on the right. The only thing we're missing now is the cost of those parts, and they were how much? $6. Okay, so in the parts cost column, write $6. Okay, does everybody see where those numbers came from? Okay, go ahead now and record the remaining four invoices. Total the journal, balance it. The Parts and Service Journal records the invoices from the car repair shops. Record the remaining invoices, total the columns, and balance the journal. Check your answers by referring to page 8.13 in the appendix. Then begin again.